family and the class of 2020. This is what we have all been waiting for, for the past 12 years. I know this isn't how we thought senior year would go. However, this brings not only our class together, but all the classes of 2020 around the country. We are all going through the same thing right now. It's comforting to know we aren't going through it alone. The class of 2020 will go down in history. This isn't supposed to be a day of disappointment, but a day of celebration. We've earned that. All of the growth, tears, stress, and hard work, determination, and dedication is the drive that got us to where we are today. High school is the foundation of our whole lives. Everything happens for a reason. This experience molds us into the people we are now and who we are becoming. This has taught us to never take anything for granted. No, this isn't how we predicted senior year to end, but we did it and we made it happen. It's time for the next step of our lives. Bring it on. And now for a national anthem performed by graduating senior, Matt Musso. <laughs> At this time, it is my privilege to introduce Eve Darius, valedictorian of the class of 2020. Eve is from Brewer and is daughter of Brian and Gail Darius. This fall, Eve will be attending the University of Maine, majoring in nursing. Hello, everyone. I'm very happy to be here today despite all that has happened, even if it's not in the way we expected. I'd like to start out by taking a moment to thank the teachers, faculty, and parents that have helped us all make it here today. Also, I'd like to say that I'm proud of our class for finally coming to this moment and graduating. When I learned that I had the privilege to give the valedictorian speech for graduation, I didn't really know what I wanted to talk about at first. I knew I wanted it to be something that was meaningful to me and could also leave an impact for everyone who was listening. As a class, we've experienced many ups and downs over the last four years, and lately it's been really easy to focus on the negatives. But today, I want to talk about success and celebrating the little wins in life. Feeling like a success or being successful, in my own eyes, is something I've struggled with. It doesn't matter what I've accomplished since I know in the future I plan to do things that are bigger and better. So I didn't consider myself successful yet. I feel that this is something a lot of other people experience as well. Whether it's as a student or parent or an athlete or a friend, it can be hard to feel like a success even if you have had some accomplishments. A lot of times this comes from our own self-doubt. We usually don't give ourselves credit where credit is due, and it can be hard to see your own achievements and talents. However, today this is exactly what I want to talk about. Because success is something we all want to achieve, but self-doubt affects your ability to feel successful. I know a lot of times I haven't taken the proper time to truly be proud of my accomplishments. And it took a whole new way of thinking about the concept of success in order to open my eyes. 
Everything started to change for me the day that someone asked me why I didn't find my accomplishments to be a success. While I've always thought that my success would come from curing cancer or just something just as extravagant, this person was able to see me, my grades, and my commitment to my job, community, and family as all successes that I should acknowledge. These were all things that seemed small in my eyes, and it took hearing someone else say this that made me realize there was a lot that I could be proud of. I just needed to look at the idea of success through a different lens. I now have a new idea of what it means to be successful. Really, success doesn't mean doing something huge or important, and it definitely doesn't mean you have to find the cure for cancer. Success is whatever you define it as. Sometimes this means getting that dream job you've always wanted, and other days a success can just be getting out of bed and brushing your teeth. I think we all had days lately where that's all we have energy to do. It's important to acknowledge these seemingly small events in our lives just as much as celebrating our greatest accomplishments because every win can be counted towards our own view of success. What I'm asking you to do is that at the end of the day, instead of thinking about what you didn't have time to do, instead of focusing on shortcomings, take the time to think of all the successes you've had, no matter how small they may feel. If you decide what being a success means to you, there's no telling how many wins you can experience every single day. When you take time to be proud of your accomplishments, some of that self-doubt can disappear. I truly believe that if we all look back at our lives and think about what we've done, there's so much that can be seen as great accomplishments and successes, much more than we even realize. All we have to do is take time to recognize these small wins for ourselves. What I'm really trying to say is that I want everyone to live a successful life, whatever that means for you. I know all of you can do it. Let success be whatever you want it to be. It can be big or small, and it can even change all the time. And you must always remember that there isn't one event that can define your success. I hope this message can resonate with some of you the way it resonated with me when I first heard it. Especially during times when there's little we can control, taking time to think of our own successes can help make things seem a little bit better. And to my class, the class of 2020, I want you to all know that you have so much potential. We may be known as the class that graduates during a pandemic, but we will also be known as individuals who add value into this world. There may have been some ups and downs during the past four years, and we will continue to feel ups and downs because that's just a part of life. But look at us right now. We have succeeded and we are graduating. It's really amazing if you think about it. Now it's time to show what we can do and what we are going to accomplish. I want you to please always remember that you are capable you are gifted, and you can do whatever you put your mind to. Lastly, I'd like to say congratulations and good luck to all my peers going forward. I hope you find all the success you're looking for, and thank you for listening. Hello all, my name is Riley LaBelle. Before I begin, I want to take the time to thank you all for being here today to help us all make our non-traditional commencement something to remember. 13 years ago, as a kindergartner, I thought of high school and I was terrified and excited, as I'm sure we all were. Four years ago, as a freshman, I walked through these halls for the very first time and got so lost. I'd never asked so many questions in a day. How do I get to the art room? Where are the bathrooms? How do I get to the office from here? Why are there so many different hallways? I think these are all questions we considered or even asked at one point. They always say high school flies by and I never really believed it, but they were right. Four short years later, we are here. We are graduating in a way unlike any other class has experienced. I don't think any of us ever imagined senior year ending the way it has, but here we are making the best of it. I didn't get involved much during my first two years of high school, mainly because I was too scared to branch out from my comfort zone. However, as I got more comfortable, I began to sit with new people, join clubs, and even make more friends. 
I realized what life had in store for me. About six months ago, my dad suffered from multiple strokes. While moving into a new house, I spent weeks wondering if he was even going to make it, and I spent months by his hospital bed cheering him up and helping him forward. Through this, I committed to my dream school in Arizona, and after that, I knew I could get through anything. Through these four years, I've seen my friends, teachers, and parents come together over many tragedies, including losing those we love the most, and we've all come out stronger than before. Now we are here, our hearts full of love and joy for those who have left us and for those who could not be here today due to illness or social distancing. But none of us would be here today without everyone that surrounds us here at Brewer High. Thank you to the lunch ladies for all the smiles and the food, to the teachers for all the support, not only with our work, but with our lives, to the administration for always trying their best to keep us happy and safe, to the parents for your support, and thank you to every single one of my peers for making my high school experience the way it was. This is a big step in our lives, and we are the class of 2020, ready and capable to take on whatever the world has for us. Although it's not traditional, we're still making our mark, getting that diploma, and showing everyone how strong and capable we really are, not only as a class, but as individuals. This is a time of many ends, but it's also a time of abundant new beginnings, hopes, and chances. This is where we all begin to create our futures and walk down our own paths while never forgetting where we came from. This is our time to shine, embrace what's coming for us, and have the best futures possible. Thank you. I'd like to welcome everyone, teachers, families, and most importantly, the class of 2020. High school is over. That statement comes with a different set of thoughts and feelings for everyone, but if you're anything like me, it first makes me feel proud of what I've achieved, upset that I have to leave, and worried about what's to come. It's not like this was a surprise either. We've envisioned our graduation for years. Maybe not this particular situation, but a graduation of some type. <laughs> Somehow, I still managed to find myself unprepared to leave high school. There's a lot that the class of 2020 has missed out on. Prom, senior spring sports and activities, a senior prank, it became unsafe for us to have any of these experiences pretty abruptly, and there's no single person to blame for it. Sometimes plotting my revenge can make me feel a little better, but that's kind of hard when your target is microscopic. There's no way to miraculously bring all of these things back, and fixating on the issue won't solve anything. It'll only hold us back during a time where we're supposed to be starting a new part of our lives. We can't let a bad experience control us and keep us from our full potential. Nobody reasonably thought that a pandemic would occur because people don't expect or hope for things to go wrong, but surprises can happen. I didn't expect to fail my driver's test three times, but that happened. Everyone has tragedies in their lives, so what sets us apart is our ability to cope, to move forward, and to continue to find happiness despite our setbacks. Each time I failed my driver's test, it would have been very easy for me to give up, to say that driving just wasn't for me and I'd never pass. Three times, I made the decision to go back to the DMV and make another attempt. That first time I decided to try again, I didn't have immediate success. All my driving hours of practicing didn't pay off until my fourth attempt. But when all is said and done, I have a license. The class of 2020 is in a situation where we have a chance to either coast through the end of our senior year and be bitter about everything we've missed, or to look forward to the next chapter of our lives, our new goals, and everything there is to come. Something that I think we all should remember is that high school is by no means the end all be all of our lives. Many of us will continue on to college or the military or employment and will have great success in whatever we choose to do. We won't be successful due to luck or from taking the easy road. We are going to find success because we will overcome every challenge that comes our way. We're learning how to overcome a pretty big and upsetting challenge right now. Learning how to face bad things and make it through to the other side is something that everyone has to do at some point in their lives. It just so happens that we're getting that experience a little earlier than most. I don't even think that's a particularly bad thing either because we are going to continue to have challenges we need to overcome. Maybe it'll be a nasty divorce. Maybe it'll be a cancer diagnosis. Maybe it'll be losing your job. For some people, that'll be the first time they'll have to pull themselves out of a dark place. But for us, We've already gotten that experience. We know how to take something bad and turn it into fuel, how to take that negativity and turn it into a drive to persevere. We as a class have been through a lot, both corona-related and otherwise. 
Throughout the past four years, we've done some amazing things together. And while not entirely ready to let go of high school, I believe that all of us have good things coming next year. It's been an honor to be a student at Brewer High School, and I wanna say thank you to all the faculty that made the last four years so amazing. Without your influence, none of us would be who we are today. I wanna thank my classmates. High school was a pretty crazy ride for me, and I'm grateful to all of you for making that ride better. I'd also like to thank all of our parents for supporting us through four years of constant chaos. If there was ever a class that would take the world by storm, it would be us. Stay strong and wash your hands. Good afternoon. My name is Scott Walker, Assistant Principal here at Brewer High School. At this time, it is my great pleasure to present the following scholarships. The David Marshall Omart Memorial Scholarships are awarded by the Omart family in honor of David Omart, a former Brewer High School student. Selection of recipients is based on outstanding character, academic achievement, the spirit and willingness to give back to society, and the pursuit of higher education. There are two scholarships in the amount of $1,675 each. Attending Huston University, majoring in criminal justice, Matthew Gross. And attending Huston University, majoring in pre-physical therapy, Alexis Mirardi. The Fred V. Hart Memorial Scholarships are awarded by the Huston University admission staff to students who will attend Huston University in the fall. There are two scholarships in the amount of $2,000 each. First, majoring in biology, Rochelle Gilbert. And also, majoring in nursing, Lainey Springer. The Ronald F. and Marion V. Adams Educational Scholarship is awarded in honor of Mr. Ronald Adams, who is very active in the service organizations of Brewer, and Mrs. Marion Adams, who was a respected social studies teacher at Brewer High School for many years. This scholarship is based on academic excellence, citizenship, school and community involvement, and the pursuit of higher education. In the amount of $2,230, I'd like to congratulate attending the University of Maine, majoring in biology, Michaela Herson. The Senator George J. Mitchell Scholarship is awarded to one graduating senior from every public high school in Maine. This highly selective scholarship is given to an individual who has demonstrated academic excellence, school and community involvement, community service, and the pursuit of higher education in the amount of $10,000, $2,500 per year for four years. Unfortunately, this year, we were not notified in time to announce the recipient for today's event. Due to the COVID-19, the Mitchell Institute extended their deadline to apply for this scholarship and therefore, the recipient will be notified at the end of June. Please note, important information regarding the scholarships awarded today will be emailed to students this week. The following scholarships were announced during our annual scholarship night in May. Thank you very much to the Brewer High School Scholarship Committee for their work and congratulations to the following scholarship recipients.
Good afternoon, my name is Brent Slowakowski. It is certainly my privilege to serve as the principal at Brewer High School. Now I'm supposed to deliver a principal's message, but I really have no message. Uh, instead, I have a question. And the question is this, what do you do with it? And it's not so much the question that's important, it's how you answer it. And I think how you answer that question can have a profound impact on your life. And I really don't think I'm overstating that situation when I say that. This class has faced hardships and, and tragedies like no other class that has come before it. So I ask, what do you do with it? Do you allow the loss, whatever it is, to overwhelm and consume you? Or do you look for ways to turn it into good, to grow from it? What lessons can you learn from it? How can you use it to help others, to make the world a better place? What do you do with it? The current global pandemic has been tragic on so many different levels. A personal loss, over 100,000 folks have died across the country. Economic loss on so many scales, personal, state, national, businesses going out of business. And of course, the loss of once in a lifetime experiences like proms and traditional graduations. So what do you do with it? Countless stories of people finding creative and innovative ways to reach out to one another, to get food to neighbors and to people they don't even know, in ways to simply brighten others' days. Of course, the same question can be asked when good things happen. What do you do with it? With every blessing, with every good fortune, with every achievement, how do you grow from it? What lesson can you learn from it? How can you use it to make the world a better place, to help others? As unconventional as these may be, these commencement exercises mark a beginning. Your days as a high school student are now over. It's time to begin the next chapter of your life. So, what do you do with it? I'm confident that you will do great things. Congratulations to the very special class of 2020. And that brings us to the real reason we are here today. At this time, I ask Mr. Kevin Forrest, Chair of the Brewer School Committee, Mr. Greg Palmer, Superintendent of Brewer Schools, Mr. Scott Walker, Assistant Principal of Brewer High School, to join me in the awarding of diplomas. Sarah Michelle Adams. Vanessa G. Albee. Here, Christy Armstrong. Catherine Mary Austin. Ryan Hardy Averill. Isaac James Badejo.
Aubrey Michael Badger. Crystal May Belargin. Morgan Mackenzie Bean. Joshua James Birch. Caroline Sandra Blaine. Sydney Ann Blaine. Juliana Marie Briggs. Colby Michael Brooks. Michaela Grace Elaine Brown. Caleb Richard Bryant. Brooke Elizabeth Burrell. Marcus Vincent Caesar. Alexander Shane Chapman. Roderick Charette. Congratulations. 
solutions. Yeah. <laughs> Raiden Alexander Charity. Kirsten M. Shoot. Joshua Ryan Claxton. John W. Cobb. Tyler James Como. Caitlin Amanda Cook. Mackenzie Rebecca Costigan Coltart. Cameron J. Cox. Taylor Marie Cross. Calvin Philip Curtis. Eve Elizabeth Darries. Congratulations. Kaylee Olivia Sarah Deans. Mackenzie Lynn Dorr.
Connor T. Dorr. Congratulations. Bradley W. Doughty. Anthony M. Easler. Joseph S. Emery. Congratulations. Alexander Donovan Fago. John Michael Feeney. Olivia Sage Fick. Kyle Scott Fickett. Congratulations. Thank you. Mackenzie Lee Fitz. Benjamin Robert Fitzpatrick. Congratulations. Laura Simone Ford. Megan Dawn Friel.
Isabella M. Getchell. Justin Wayne George. Madison A. Gibbs. Rochelle Evis Gilbert. Caitlin Alexis Glidden. Xerxes one grant. Damian Dyer Greenlaw. Elijah Sebastian Gray. Matthew D. Gross. Dakota Allen Grover. Delaney Isabella Grover. Riley Elise Hall.
Jacob Alexander Hamilton. Jacob Ian Harper. Kaylee Ann Harvey. Tyler Austin Harvey. Congratulations. Jacqueline Faith Hensler. Kayla Burke Hersey. Congratulations. Martin Hughes. Spencer Ethan Hills. Amy Lynn Holman. Asa Ryan Honey Jr. Adam S. Hoxie. Katie Ryan Hughes. Congratulations, 
Sophia L. Inman. Emily Nicole Ireland. Jonathan R. Jones the second. Erica A. Carp. Tyler James Kearns. Jaden Lynn Keefe. Jacob Harley Kelly. Riley Jane LaBelle. Casey Ray Laffey. Morgan Elizabeth Legassi. Keegan Edward LaPointe. Devin Joseph Lapa. Yeah, buddy. Congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Abigail Grace Lawrence. Congratulations. 
Congratulations. Congratulations. Kate C. Longton. Keenan Ty McDonald. Michaela L. Malchioti. Jenna Suzanne McGrath. Nicholas Jordan Missouri. Grace Elizabeth Milan. Andrew Richard Modry. Alexis Marie Morardi. Andrew R. Marardi. Matthew David Mousseau. Elisa Munoz Curiel. Dylan Roy Myers. Nicholas W. Nason. Congratulations. 
Sean C. Neal. Justin Scott Rush Nutter. Megan Parkhurst, in memory of her brother, Jordan P. Parkhurst. We all want to thank you. Jordan's spirit is strongly felt here today, and it's carried in the hearts of his classmates and through the strength and love of his family. We appreciate you honoring this proceeding by being here. Trevor J. Pearson. Peyton Faith Pelletier. Savannah Elizabeth Perkins. Matea Roshan Philbrick. Jacob Lawrence Quimby. Congratulations, Jacob. Ian Michael Reed. Alexa Ann Richards. Brent Owen Roberts. Grace Elizabeth Robertson. <laughs> P. 
Paige Marie Robertson. Brooklyn May Robinson. Congratulations. Madrick Donovan Rodriguez. Cody Allen Ross. Congratulations. Jackson Anthony Ravito. Clarence Joseph Russell. Miranda Denali Schrader. Tyler James Smith. Laney Shea Springer. Trevin Asa St. Peter. Ashlyn Monica Stahl. Maisie Faith Stetson. Juliet Stoughton. Congratulations. 
Braden Grant Sweat. Dakota Ron Tarian Kaylee Lynn Tebow. Grady Michael Thompson. Caleb Aaron Tibbetts. Taylor Marie Tibbetts. Autumn Leanne Tripp. Braden C. Umel. Nakia Marie for a score. Sarah Lorraine Violet. Zoe L. Vidum. Sean Kenneth Ward. Mackenzie Diane Washburn. Congratulations. 
Guinevere R. Watkins. Michaela Marie McMullen. Ethan Michael Winston. Sean Hubert Wood. Victoria Page Wood. Daniel Everett Zeringer, Jr. Congratulations to the Brewer High School class of 2020.